we can talk, we can talk about um, uh, any question, any uh, in, any cases people want to discuss with. Me. Okay, so let me just jump on to this. Um, Grinet uh, Edge HA obviously is introduced in uh, 2.0, and uh, most of the people are uh, already, I think, know how to create a HA and all. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time there. Um, Okay. Okay. So, um, HHA. I'm going to cover HHA overview, configuring the HHA. Very in a, in a summary way, not in detail. And common edge edge state states. I'm going to cover that and troubleshooting failures and obviously clearing the HHA and block store HHA and troubleshooting. I'm going to cover some information about the MPIO, which I think everybody needs to know. Okay, so HHA basically is the active passive cluster, unlike uh, um, core. Core is the active active. That means both the cores would be um, supporting the edges and serving the LANs. But in the case of HHA, there is only one and one and only one. Uh, which would be serving the LANs, and second one would be just waiting and synchronizing the block store with from the active. Okay, from any point, only one edge will be serving the LANs, that I kind of made it, and standby edge will be syncing and rebuilding the actual edge, I kind of covered that. So one more thing we need to understand is edge HA clustering is only for granite edge module only. So it doesn't cover the steel head, it doesn't cover the VSP. So Steelhead and VSP are not part of the edge HA cluster, and other clustering technologies should be used to address those failures. So we know that reverse failover can be used, can be addressed using serial deployment. I have seen most often, but there are other ways, I think so. And the VSP and the SXI failover uh, has to be managed by the vSphere. Um, so it's a VMware tool. We are not concerned about it. So the VMware tool has to manage that. So what Edge HA is basically what it does, it ensures high availability from a single failure. So it's important to know that single failure, that means a single network failure, single edge failure, anything single. So if multiple things fail, uh, the Edge HA requires some manual attention to recover and it's not going to be HA at all. Because when both fail, two two problem, two things fail, the um, granite edge will fail. That is good to know, and it will be covered later on. Okay, so granite edge HA overview, um, how block store HA works. Obviously, as you uh, see that each edge has its own block store. Block store, in a pretty high level, is basically uh, key, uh, uh, accommodates the pin lens and edge caching, whatever is being cached there. Um, that's pretty much it is actually, and the write cache, whatever the client customer writes, the VMs write, or the initiators write, so they are going to be in the block store. Um, each edge HA, box will be its own block store, obviously because physically one box can fail, but the other box should um, continue to work. So these block stores will be obviously running lock and step. That means both block stores will be in sync. They will be identical. And if there is a write happens in block store one, so it has to happen on the block store two only. Also, then only the acknowledgement will be sent. Obviously, there is no data loss on a single failure, as we explained. Um, Bob or external VM should not should notice shouldn't notice anything wrong. Uh, that means the lunch should be available. That's what it is. Um, again, needless to say that when both boxes fail and HA fail, right? Uh, failover obviously takes about 30 seconds or less, and recovery synchronization is done in background. So. What it means is that recovery and synchronization done in the background 
um, I told you, right, there are two block stores. They always will be lock and step, and they will be uh, running at the similar, uh, they look similar. Mm. But what happens is when the new edge joins as a, an active edge, um, there should be some process uh, to keep, to copy the existing block store on the active edge to the passive edge. So that process is called resync uh, recovery and resynchronization, and it will be done by the back, uh, in the background, but the customer is not aware. And there is a tool that, um, NetDisk actually, that's a tool that runs and keeps this synchronization. Okay. So, so hey, Trini, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so in sync, it's doing it via like an IP connection to the to the uh, passive peer, right? Yeah, correct. So if you were to look on the wire, you you know, it basically receives. So that communication has to finish before he actually says okay to the to the VM that wrote the data. Is that right? Mm, that's correct. Assuming that these are in, uh, uh, which I'm going to cover later on, if these our cluster is in the active sync state, that means when both the nodes are up, um, so if the VM writes the data, it has to write on, uh, the write has to be completed on both the block stores. Then only they will get, uh, the acknowledgement will be sent. Right, so it's the passive guy telling the active guy, okay, I'm good, and then the active guy telling the VM who wrote the data, okay, I'm done. Got it. Okay. That's exactly All right, I just want to get that straight. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. And also, uh, just as a segue to it, and because you raised that question, so because of this process, there could be a small performance degrade yeah. compared to a single box. Right because the second box also has to write and send an acknowledgement to the active. So there will be some performance penalty in here. Right, right, right. Keep it in mind, that's it. Okay, so what is failure? I think it's very dif important to define this. When someone pulls a power card out of a single box again, not two boxes, okay? And when the whole RAID fails, again on the single box, and the granite software crashes on a single box. So failure is not single box in a RAID, obviously because if a single bo single disk fails in a RAID, um, a RAID will take care of that, right? So the HA doesn't have to take care of it. Uh, network connectivity issues between the VMware and iSCSI initiators, so which not not will be aware of the what you call the boxes are not even aware actually if there is a network connectivity, mm -hmm. it's only the VMware servers know it. Now. They just don't know it. It's not a failure to us. It's some failure to the VMware, maybe. Uh, single network link on the other box goes down. It's not a failure because, as I'm going to explain later on, we need two links. And both network links fail, two other box go down, but the box stays up. We don't call it as a failure, but for the customer perspective, it's a failure. But it's kind of weird. But it is not. It is actually true. If both the links, the heartbeat links which we set up which between the two active and the passive edges fail, it's not considered failure. This called split brain. So I'm going to cover that a little bit later on. Okay, so very quickly, how do you configure the edge HA? Um, when it's fully configured, it looks like this. Uh, no, it doesn't look like this. So when there is no passive edge, the configuration looks like this. That means one edge is already connected to the core and it's up and running. This is a prerequisite actually. The edge need to be connected, the active edge need to be connected to the core and running. Then only you can uh, uh, create, we, another edge can join as a passive edge. So what we do, we go to the second edge and obviously fill in this information. Um, very quickly, edges, uh, active edge serial number, active edge ID, and two paths, two network paths, uh, so that they can exchange the heartbeat. And so wait, course, wait, wait, hang on a second. The, the edge mm -hmm. ID, that's, that's interesting, right? Because 
the primary is that the same as the primary? Okay, yeah, that's correct. So if you it see it on okay. the if uh, if I go back a little bit, so this is one edge. Let's assume that this is the edge which is joining. I'm sorry. Uh, why did I do that? Okay. So let's assume this is the edge. Not edge. Let's assume this is the edge, which is the active, right? Right. And when it joins the core, um, it uses the edge ID. Right. Uh, okay. So that is the edge ID we need to use it because the core should know actually there are, there are two edges physical edges but they are in the h pair okay. so as far as the core is concerned they will talk to both edges with a single single name okay, okay. so that is mm -hmm. the reason we need to uh, add enter this uh, um, edge id okay. and it's the same on both okay and then and the same core just no Yes, exactly. That there's HA pair happening. Okay, gotcha. Correct, yes. So basically, you just say connect to the pair. So as you see it here, actually, joining the edge HA is actually driven by the from the passive. Okay? Again, a little bit uh, uh, different from the core HA, which I will cover later on. From In the core HA, um, very quickly, you can join from anywhere. But here, it has to be all the joining has to be initiated from the edge that's going to be passive. Okay. Now, what I did? Okay. Okay. So once it joins the core, once it joins the edge, this is the picture you will see it here. Okay. So these are the two networks. Through which they are talk, uh, they are replicating the block store and exchanging the heartbeat, and if you see it here, active sync that is the state of this cluster, which I'm going to cover later on. When you when the edge when in passive edge joins the pa active edge in a HF pair, it will be it will not be in the active sync basically. It will be active rebuild state. That means. It's, com it's copying the block store. Um, so don't think this uh, this picture is not uh, what you call absolutely correct. When you join, when you create the edge HA pair, it will not just jump into active sync. Okay, so I'm going to cover this here. So HA validation, um, because as I said, the Joining the edge HA always initiated from the passive edge. So obviously, active edge need to accept this connection so that the HA cluster will be formed. And it does basically some validation before it does accept the passive edge as its peer. Okay. So validation, obviously, it will say active edge has to be Validation fails um, when network is not reachable. It's kind of no-brainer there. Um, so validation also fails if the serial number is doesn't match some security thing there. Edge identifier provider is not the same as Active Edge. Um, kind of obvious here. Based on what I explained before, core always sees both edges as with a single name. Activity is not connected to the granite core. So this is something which you need to keep it in mind. I told you initially itself, before we, the edge HA is created, one of the, so this should be the state. That means the edge should be connected to the core and talking to it. So that is also checked on the validation here. The active edge is not connected to the, it will fail, actually. It's negative. Validation fails if the active edge is not connected to the granite core. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. Double negative here. Okay. Active edge is already in the HA configuration or something else, obviously. Because, as I said, our HA pair can only have two nodes here, active and standby. Um, active and standby nodes are not the same model. Mm, I'm not sure what ex how many times it would happen, but it's good to know that both we cannot uh, 
join a uh, two different models of HHS uh, boxes into a into a pair um, into a HHS pair. <coughs> okay. Okay. So failover. What happens when one of the box goes down? I think that's kind of interesting to know, right? Um, so the standby becomes active. That means assuming that the active box goes down, standby becomes active, but it's an active degraded state. The cluster will be in the active degraded state. So that means the other the active kind of obvious, the standby became active, degraded, that means other box is down. So the cluster is in degraded condition. The newly active system reconstructs what the dead system was just finishing doing. It's kind of indexes kind of memory and whatever it is. So down, uh, what you call bottom line, it takes less than, it takes less than uh, 30 seconds. Um, and if everything goes well, if it is not a double, it's not a double failure, the standby system, uh, uh, okay, why is this? Okay, if everything goes down, the lungs will be accessible. Okay, this the standby goes down, the active detects the failure and falls the active degraded state. So we are covering two things here. The active box goes down, um, so the passive one will be active and assuming the standby goes down, so there's no change that is required, right? All it does is active box will detect the failure and uh, uh, cluster will be in the active degraded state. Okay, so that kind of provides a good segue, right? What are the types of states in this cluster can be? Okay, common edge states here. Okay, so the, you, let's see the top one. Active degraded, uh, graded edge fellow. Active degraded, that means one of the edge um, is active and the other edge is down. That's what it means, active degraded. Active rebuild, that means when the box, when a passive box joins an active cluster, a cluster, cluster, I explained to you, right, the block store need to be synchronized. So that means that is the state, active rebuild state. Always remember, if you even restart a, any of the edge, it first go to active rebuild state. That means whatever the things that have not been missing from the active to the passive um, has to be done at the time. So it goes to the active rebuild state and it goes to the active sync. Active sync means both the edges are in having the correct block store and any of it can take over as active. But what happens is all the writes that happen on the edge are, are the cache that is populated on the edge has to be replicated to the passive edge. That is what is meant by sync. That means both are active and they are in doing the sync position. They are syncing the, the block store. So any questions there? It's so, so kind of, it, it is important that you should know this concept actually. Um, very important that if when you're debugging it, you need to know these states. Okay, so assuming, go to the next step. And how does states get transitioned? Okay, active node reboot example. This is what is there. So kind of pretty straightforward. If I do a service restart on the active node, what would happen? What are the states this cluster flows through? Okay, so node A, let's assume this is the active state and we reboot it. Now come back to the right hand side, standby sync. So when node A, the top line if you say active sync and node B is in the standby sync and node A is rebooted and node B will take over and it will jump into active degraded state. The cluster will go to the active degraded state. Now, 
assuming that we just reboot it right so node a comes back now node a joins the cluster because it knows it's not going to be a active one again it's it's going to be passive one it talks to node b and node b will start sending all the updates back to node a so the cluster will become active rebuilt that means act, node a is going to be active and it is in the rebuild state that means it's sending all these block store things to the node a so rebuild will complete and all the block store things will complete and node a if you see it here will continue to stay as active active sync and node a no, node b is going to be um, continue to stay as active and node a will con will assume the uh, status of standby sync so what we learned from this is that once the hand uh, once the failover happens whatever the node that became active will continue to stay active actually so it's important to know that these edges once they become ha pairs they become peers that means nobody they are become equal partners um so whoever becomes active they continue to stay active till that particular node fails it's kind of important to know this uh why is this is that in the case of steel head um it may be different right in the case of steel head if, if it is deployed in the uh, uh master and standby um if the master dies standby will be assuming as the master and if the once the master comes back it will become master again so when you are analyzing system dumps um you need to understand this um it it may be an active edge but may be a passive still head so when you are analyzing the system dumps and looking at the connections um you need to look at the appropriate uh, box so good idea is always when you have in this kind of um environment um ha cluster you should get both the system dumps not one not the active one most likely the active one is the one which gives us all the information but just to make sure that we covered everything we should get both the system dumps and then analyze the system dump on which the edge is active hey trini have you ever seen the um message files while this is occurring like do you see the transitions going you yeah. know, from you do okay absolutely you would see that i think i have a slide here which shows a little bit okay so the next one okay rebuild how do we recover from the failure uh we need to resynchronize the block stores um this is as i said you know entirely act, uh, managed by the active system um we detect that kind of synchronization okay full rebuild obviously it is when the dead box is uh, if box dead and also remember not only box is dead actually when the initial um cluster is established um the 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 passive edge which joins the active edge has to get full rebuild because there is nothing there so full rebuild happens when the box is dead and initial cluster is established partial rebuild when the dead box is repaired that means the node disks are removed or anything like that um so but lot of data is missed but partial rebuild will happen okay okay so major block store ha components is kind of good to know as i explained net disk is the component of linux component i think you can google it and see it's open source stuff um net disk is the one which keeps this block stores in synchronization it's really one quick question on the sure. previous one So when you have a dead box let's say uh, 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 and you attach you go through the same process of adding a, a, a new um 
a new back, a uh, new HA pair. The same, same, same process. You take the serial number, add it, and give it the IP address of the of the active, and the active will know that this is a same, uh, this is a replacement. Yeah. Okay. So we we're going to cover that, I think, here. But it's. Um, I will point you to KB. I think there is also KB error. I think how to do it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. So major block store components, as I explained, net disk and rebuild. Um, okay. Double failure. This is something we keep seeing this again, again, all the time. Okay, HH is again, again um, what, as I explained, is resilient for a single failure. Um, it is, in the case of double failure, it requires a manual intervention to recover. Okay, so double node failure may occur due to the following reasons. Both nodes in HR are power cycled. This is, generally happens everywhere. So, customer would say that, you know, my edges are down. Um, it's a HA pair. And uh, if you ask more questions, like they would say that a power lost or something like that. Um, so I think in the new versions, they have enhanced the code a little bit so that um, the edge that is previously active would know that it's an active one and it will come up as active and no manual intervention may be required, but it can happen. That there might be manual intervention required. I think I'm going to cover that. So when both when both are power cycled, um, edge HA is not degraded, only one node and the second node is power. Okay, so the second situation HHA is in degraded mode on one node. Oh, okay. So what it means that if the cluster is already in degraded mode, that means one of the edge is down already for whatever the reason. So if the other edge, other edge fails, then obviously it's a double failure, right? So it's kind of uh, common sense. I don't know why we added this one here. So double load failure obviously will happen when both are power cycled. Uh, one edge is already failed for some reason, and the second edge is also failed. Okay, so due to the block store sync from the active to standby, it's important to have the last active node to come back in the active mode to prevent data loss. I think this is something which I think we need to drill it on our mind all the time. So, as I explained here, block store sync always happens from active to passive. And the block store on the active node is the authority. Okay, so to just to make sure there is no data corruption, the, the sync should never happen, never ever happen from uh, um, passive edge to the active edge for whatever the reasons. So that I, brings I have, us a, I have question. a quick question. I have a question. Sure. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, sure, sure, yeah. So let's say they're powered down, you know, weekend maintenance, and the guy doesn't know which which one is active and which one is passive. Does it matter which one comes up first? Mm, like that, no, no, no. Okay. So normally in the in the new code, um, if it, if it if it is a, a controlled um, shutdown, like a scheduled shutdown, so mm -hmm. it is always advised bring down the passive edge first, and then the active edge. Okay, and what about bringing back up? Yeah. So in that case, when we bring it up, the even the passive edge comes first. Yeah. Um, it knows that it's a passive edge, so it will okay. not come up. It will wait for the active. But okay. it doesn't happen. The customer doesn't have, because 
our HHA is, uh, as I said, active standby. And one of the edge becomes active, it can continue to stay as active. So customer may not even aware actually what is that active edge and passive edge. So it may I be possible just, uh, that. Huh? Beg pardon. I was just thinking that if he brought up the passive and he didn't see the active up, then he became the active, like something like that. No, that kind of thing happen. But mostly, what will happen is when the power fails, customer may not follow the process, or the power failure. Both they just lost power at the same time. Right. So, but there is a command which tells us uh, what is the previous state of the, uh, what is the status of the edge when the power failed. Uh, through that, you can find out what is the, um, wh what is the active edge, and then we can bring it up. So the point I'm trying to make here is that there should be some caution exercised and some thought process should go on before we, in such a situation, to analyze what is the active edge. So sometimes you may have to look at the logs and see whatever is the one which is synchronizing it and then do it. It's a little bit complicated, but normally we don't get into that kind of situation. Okay? So in both the above cases, so in the case of double failure, what it means is that both the nodes will be in the base state. And once they get into the base state, very likely that data is, it, it's, it's very difficult to figure it out, what is the active. But there is a way to um, analyze it and bring it up. So I would probably go and cover that, or at least point you to the KB. Okay, so double failures when both nodes restart. This is the question we are talking about, right? So assuming that the power was lost on both the nodes, um, so we don't know what is the active node. Um, so this is the command you would run, device failover act. Okay, so this is the command you would first run, show device failover saved state. That means what is the state of the box when the power cycle happened? Is it the active or is it the passive one? It will tell you. Okay. Oh my God, what is happening here? Okay. So it's kind of, this slide is slightly not ordered correctly. So first you would run this command, show device failover save state. That will tell you what is active or not. So on the active state, on the active box, you run this, device failover activate. So that active one becomes active. So as I explained here, it is important to figure out what is the active edge first and then run this command so that we accidentally don't do a replication between the old passive edge to the active edge. That can, that can corrupt the data. Okay. Okay. So split brain. I think this is something which commonly talked about everywhere. Any cluster can get into this kind of situation. Split brain happens when the network, two network, both the networks between the edges go down. So that means each node is active and running, thinks the other node is down. So then what would happen is, so this is how the state will transfer. So let's, uh, let's assume node A is active sync, node B is standby sync, and the network failed. And node A jumps to active degraded, and node B acts, jumps to active degraded. Okay? When the network is up, they don't know which one is active because both claim they are active, right? So the safest thing at that point is no, both the nodes will shut down. So this should never ever happen. So once the 
it just both it just join becomes uh, get into the state of split brain um you can actually pretty well sure that actually definitely there's a very high likely chance that the data is corrupted okay so how do we recover from this kind of situation um so i'm going to give you here so this is the kb actually which explains how do we get into the split brain and how do we recover from it i think this one we will never ever share with the customer but something we need to know uh obviously before proceeding we need to tell the customer there is a likely chance of lung corruption and then we we comb the logs and find out actually what was the last active one and then we follow this process here from steps 2 to steps 3 to activate the edge which we believe is the active edge okay now question to you it's so to avoid these kind of things we always suggest the customer the heartbeat connections between the two edges has to be directly connected using a uh, crossover cable so we don't recommend having any switch between these two because at least one, in one instance i have seen there is a switch bit, which is used to connect both these cables and that that switch died so that means both the networks went down so to avoid these kind of things we would definitely tell the customer make sure to use a class over cable and connect the just directly with no active components in between okay so but this is the process we would follow in case um, split brain occurs so what is a token a token actually when you run this command um, when you device fail or activate it will generate a command a token and you need to you basically what it says is that you need to run the same command twice just to make sure that we are doing we know what we are doing okay so for the first command will generate a token and second command you would force activate using the token um again basically we don't hurt ourselves you know so okay so that's how we can recover from the split brain okay state machine continued so dead state um black store activation failed it would happen very rarely though um like some disks are already bad for some reason um so it, the edge is not able to activate the black store um we'll generate a alarm which is uh, critical obviously um local write failed um which means uh there's some sector error some disk problem something i have never seen it but i think it's likely possible um block store network error uh so obviously there is error in syncing up the data from active to uh, passive node um i never seen this but i think potentially it's possible um so if such a thing case happens uh, that that box whichever uh, the standby node will get into this dead state so this is whatever is defined in this uh, uh, slide is something for us to good to know um but i never seen this happen okay alarms uh granite edge hcha high availability alarm is triggered when situations affect the high availability are encountered okay obviously degraded that means one of the box is down it doesn't affect the service but some activity something need to be done okay critical obviously it affects the service uh, lungs are no longer available um so the critical could be like as i explained here 
one of the uh, edges block store activation has failed and some read write failed and block store network something failed so okay. either of it can be critical um, obviously if the critical if the cluster in the critical mode that means the damage has already been done that means it's we are not serving any lens something need to be done immediately if it is degraded the cluster is still working but attention need to be given uh, why it is degraded okay uh hha -H troubleshooting okay so again i think i'm reemphasizing here um it gets into degraded mode uh, when one of the heartbeat fails high availability heartbeat times out um some problem with the block store connection okay critical again block store activation fails local write fails split brain and edge requires activation so the last one i want to cover a little bit uh, granite edge requires activation that means when there is a power failure happens uh, it's possible that it might get into this situation uh, they just cannot decide would uh, which one is active before and then we need to run this uh, show device uh, saved state command and we find out what is the um, which edge was the active edge and then we need to act manually activate it okay uh okay so i think someone asked the question uh what we see in the logs here um system logs you need you can grip to any of these five states state machine heartbeat manager service channel and uh, update so all the state transitions as i said in the notice level that means you definitely catch them um so you can see messages like you know transitioning from active degraded to active rebuild and so it kind of what is happening is very well logged here okay and uh, do you have any more okay clearing edge hcha so obviously you know admin might want to clear the edge hcha for whatever the reason you know um so all you need to do is to clear the edge hcha you have to click on the failover pair um on the granite storage page um so but we need to remember this it the edge clear failover pair will not work all the time it can only work in particular states um so as you see it here you can clear the failover pair only on standby rebuild that means on the device which is you are clicking this clear failover pair should be in standby rebuild failed and standby sync fail and the active degraded state in any of these states only you can clear the pair okay so what it means is that if we can read through this one little clearly you would understand actually actually um in the case of you can always clear this from a standby pair uh, from a passive disk from a passive pair see that active rebuild and standby sync but from the active a uh, node you can only clear it when it is an active degraded state so this gives us a little bit segue good question like what happens one of the box fail right how do we automate it's very clear so when one of the box fails the other box will be in the active degraded state because the other box has already failed so what you do in that case is you clear the failover pair so that means the cluster will forget cluster will become unclustered so it will then you bring the second box 
um, BAP and join the second box as a HA pair. That will be it actually, RMAing the box. Uh, Asif, did you understand what I am saying? I got it. Okay. So, um, so, very straightforward, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, so, um, the old box has the, um, not old box, the core remembers the edge identifier of the previous box, right? So, mm -hmm. do we need to clear, do we need to clear that uh, um, old identifier before we put in the new box? No. So, in the case of edge HA, so let's assume that one of the box died, right? Mm -hmm. So the other box will be in the active degraded state. This is in the third state here, active degraded. Yes, yes. okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means one box is running. Mm -hmm. So on that box, you click then clear failover pair. Okay, that clears uh, identifier. Okay, got you. Okay. Okay, then the second box comes in. You join, using the second box, you join in the HHA again. Okay, got you. Okay. It's, okay. Okay, so on success, obviously, you know, if if it is an active degraded state, when you clear the pair, it will become active because there is no cluster at all, right? It will become a standard node. And once you join the HA, the second box, it will become, uh, it will join as, it becomes active rebuild or whatever. Okay, so next thing. Okay, so I think it's a little bit explains more what happens is, okay, active degraded, clear the fair, configuration will be lost on the standby. And click the clear fair, it becomes active standalone, single box. Okay, so this is something in the real world, you know, we need to understand this a little bit. Though it's nothing related to the HHA, but something we need to understand. How does the VMware see this, right? So you have two edges here, active edge and standby edge. Both are serving LUNs. I mean, okay, both are capable of serving LUNs. Both are not serving LUNs at the same time because we know that only active serves the LUNs, right? But how does the VMware know it? Because um, it doesn't understand any AGHA or anything like that, right? So normally it will be configured. It will be visible like this. It will be wired like this if you see it here. So Same initiator name or something? Yeah, so I'm going to come here. So this uh, uh, slide explains a little bit actually. So this is the initiator, and it initiator would talk to both the edges. It has more the connections to the edges, okay? So when the initiator wants to talk to the LUN using the standby, it will redirect the connections to the active edge. See, this is the thick blue line, okay? So what in summary happens is, initiator knows both the edges as two um, targets, but only the active edge will be the target that is serving the LUNs. If the standby edge gets connections, it will automatically redirect them to the active edge. So basically, for EXXI perspective, it's kind of, um, what do you call, transparent to it. Okay? So as you see it here, in the, in the return, it kind of, both the edges are aware of all the portals, self portals and peer portals. So peer portal is on the standby edge. And peer portal is, is the edge, the portal on the other edge actually. And the both edges respond to send targets and active edge serves the IOS, okay? Passive edge redirects the, all the connections to the active edge. So it's, and it's good actually, initiated because they don't remember it. Um, if the state changes, active, active edge becomes passive edge and passive edge becomes active edge. Um, because it doesn't remember it, initiate doesn't remember it, um, it will keep going to the active edge and then if it is not an active edge, it will send the connections to the other box. Okay. Uh, 
what next I think we already covered this I think uh, okay so this is performance considerations I think we I kind of explained in the beginning itself there could be some additional latency expected okay because in the case of AGHA the runs uh, the write has to happen on both the block stores and um, the synchronization happens on the network so there is a overhead to that about 20 percent I think that's what they say and the performance degrade during rebuild um, so the again as I said rebuild happens when the cluster is initially formed or the box is replaced um, in that case both the boxes will be busy you know to rebuilding this and some performance degradation is expected but that will go away once the rebuild is completed okay so net network best practices duplex settings and 1 GB both interfaces minimum required for the heartbeat and uh, replication okay for best results iSCSI and net disk traffic must travel and over different paths what it means is that actually the heartbeat LUNs and the LUNs, uh, the, the I mean heartbeat NICs and the ESXi talk to the edge should talk to it through a different NICs. So best practice is uh, ESXi should talk through the primary interface. I have seen most of the people configure that way. And um, uh, there could be a normally a data card um, maybe a couple of Ethernet ports would be using for uh, synchronization okay that's what it mean uh, many may switching latency try a crossover cable for net disk it is actually not try it's mandatory definitely best practice that's it I think it took more time than uh, what I expected um, so do you have any questions here? Um, just for the, <clears throat> the primary and the ox are the ones that should be connected um, for the heartbeat, right? That's a must, right? For the HHA? No, 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 no. No, actually we need to have two, uh, two NICs that should be connected for uh, heartbeat and uh, replication. Um, normally, customers don't use primary and ox. Uh, can be used there is no reason why they should not be used um, but best of practice is uh, they should have a, a four port card configured as a data card and use two ports in that for yeah, the only reason I'm asking is I read somewhere in documentation let me pull up that okay that's uh, I read somewhere that these are the two there that has to be used okay I got you yeah okay. because if you use uh, uh, primary and ox uh, for heartbeat and replication what is the interface then ESX is supposed to talk to the edge it has to use yeah. one of those two right and which is not mm -hmm. recommended at all for performance reasons yeah yeah okay I will um, point at the documentation if, if I yeah. see it I but it's corrected. possible yeah. can be done actually but it's not a bet, best better best practice yeah. Srini, I have um, two questions, if, you, if I can sure. ask. What is the sure. best practice? Which interface, primary or in path, should be uh, used for the connection to the core device? I Let's always say you have you, you have a yeah. VSP running on the on the EX device as well. Uh huh. Um, best practice is always use the primary. Not okay, even if the even if then even if the VM traffic is is going using the primary interface. Okay, so again, when the VSP is running, so there is another interface actually. ESP talks to the e EX box, which is called HPN network. If you see it, it will have an IP address uh, with 192 address actually. So even the ESXi is pointing to the primary address as iSCSI target but 
the the what you call the steelhead knows that this connection is coming from the VSP, and always it will point to the 192 address, which is the HPN network. So that traffic will never leave the box; it will stay within the box. Okay, so what you're saying is always use the primary. Yes, always use the Always, it's a good practice to use primary. Never use okay, the in-path. Let me ask another question then. Uh, do you remember which VMware HA features are supported on Steelhead EX device in HA cluster? Oh, okay. Can you repeat the question again? Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of discussions on the granite technical, right? Uh, uh -huh. Which VMware HA features are supported on the Steelhead EX uh, HA cluster? So oh, let's say you have okay. two edges devices, right? Correct, we yeah. know that uh, customers uh, would like to have the HA between these yeah. uh, edge devices. And now uh, the question is, which features are officially supported by us? I know that oh, okay. cold motion will work, right? But, okay. but all advanced, we are, we, we, we are not still supported, right? We, we do not Correct. support them. We actually, you know what? Um, again. Just to set the tone, the HA, uh, ESX HA, and uh, has to be supported obviously by the external VX uh, vCenter server, which is not part, which is not running on the VSP. Okay, the vCenter server has to be running outside the VSP. That's first requirement, um, and the second one, we don't support vMotion. Active vMotion. So in the VMware, they have this active vMotion, right? VM can be moved between the ESX servers while they are up, right? So we don't support why, that. Why we don't? Do you know why we don't support the, the hot vMotion? Yeah, I believe it's required. There is some uh, support required through from the uh, storage, and we don't we don't have that feature. Okay. So, um, so they call it as hot to be motion, I think. Okay. Let me ask so, you two, two more questions, if if you don't mind. Sure, okay. sure, yeah. Uh, they are not re they are not re really related to to your presentation, but maybe it's uh, worth to discuss this. What's the difference between sure. uh, maximum number of private snapshots and scheduled snapshot on the on the core device? Maximum number of private snapshots. And schedule oh, snapshots. First, first of all, what is the private snapshot? The private snapshot is the snapshot which is not um, um, okay. propagated back to the core device, right? Correct, yes, yes. Okay, and, and we can keep a maximum by default 16 private snapshots on the EX device, right? And, okay, snapshot, first of all, is not there, not present on the EX box. Snapshot is always on the filer. Okay. The only the we only keep the status that we did a snapshot. Um, so any of the private snapshots they don't live on the edge at all. Only public snapshots will be available on the edge. And okay, okay. public snapshots we only support through v, uh, through the Windows right? So yeah, all it, the it, VMware. It, 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 it makes sense. So, yeah, so, so all so the VM, so not, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go on, go on. Uh, in my view, uh, as far as I know, all the VMware snapshots are always uh, private snapshots. Because we never present that snapshot back to the uh, host. Okay, so let me ask two, two questions then. Let's sure. say you, on the edge device you are triggering the snapshot. This is the um, even not application consistent snapshot or crash consistent, doesn't matter. This snapshot mm -hmm. is not proxy uh, backup mounted, right? So mm -hmm. how many snapshots can you trigger on the edge device? I, I don't think there is any limitation at all. Okay, great. So uh, let's say the Loon has the snapshot policy. By default, you uh -huh. can keep five uh, snapshots on the loan, right? By default, you can keep the five snapshots of the LUN. Of the loan, yeah, on the, on the snapshot oh. policy on the core device. But that is and exactly... Question, yeah, yeah, go ahead. 
And now my question is because you know customer can 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 create the the snapshot policy, uh -huh. and and based on my understanding, or at least I don't know if it's uh, I, I missed something somewhere, but uh -huh. I saw even 11 or 16 or even 20 snapshots created automatically, and they are not removed from the edge device and not removed from the core device, nor in, in, even not from the from the filer. So I would like to understand the differences here. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So this is a good question, actually. Um, so when we see the maximum snapshots. Um, from the scheduler, so that is meant for snapshots created by the scheduler. So if the customer made 20 manual snapshots, those 20 manual snapshots will never be removed. They will just stay there. Okay. okay. So, so that has to be manually case. removed. So this must be a bug then, because yeah. I saw that a customer created, a, let's say, um, hourly so every, mm -hmm. every one hour he's triggered the the, the snapshot and mm -hmm. he wants to keep only two snapshots mm -hmm. right so my base based on my understanding uh, the cleanup script should should remove the third snapshot the oldest yep. one yep yep so if we did and again I, I, and i shouldn't see it on the edge device because on the edge device i can see if the snapshot has been triggered manually or automatically, so I should I, I, I should only see two automatic automatic uh, snapshots, right? Schedule Schedule snapshot. snapshot. Yeah. So it doesn't work. So okay. So if the if you see a third one, that means there is some issue there. And I, I have seen this in world versions actually. Even um, even even in my lab, I see it. It's very easy to reproduce this. To be honest. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I also see that uh, some customers, at least some, um, the scheduler managing properly. That uh, I think his customer has got a snapshots of I think 30 snapshots for whatever reason he set it up. So when 31 snapshot happens, I see that actually deletes one, the last one. Okay, interesting, interesting. The last question. Yeah. Uh, I don't expect sure. the answer now, but do you have any experience with DFS replication and uncommitment data? Maybe this will be the topic for the another meeting next week because uh, many customers are um, reporting the issue of uncommitment data. We know that each write and uh, maybe copy paste the one gig file may 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 double this this amount of data, right? So if the time ten times customer will copy and and paste uh, and re and and remove some data the file from the from the edge um, uh, device, then we may spend gigs of uncommitment data, but um, do you have any any knowledge about how the um, DFS replication work? Okay, so I think I made a KB here um, some time back. Um, so let me uh, uh, do some uh, some more research on this, and then probably we can cover on uh, next meeting. It will be great. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Um, sorry, folks. I think it, it took more than eight minutes more than expected. Um, no worries. We'll so... charge you later. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, a um, couple of minutes. If anybody has more questions, um, we can do it. Otherwise, uh, I will schedule another. We'll meet again next week. Okay. Thank you very much. For your time. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, really. Bye. -bye. Bye.